Today, we will look at how the portfolio of some of the best and worst European PT playing platforms performs based on publicly available data. The goal is to give you an idea about which platforms perform well and are suitable investment options. We will also cover the poorly performing platforms so you know which companies you better avoid. Nothing in this video is meant to be investment advice. P2P lending is a dynamic, ever-changing industry and you might lose your money. In today's video, I will also cover recent developments that will significantly impact your investments next year. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to watch until the end. In terms of Austrian portfolio amounts, Mintos, Estate Guru and Peerberry manage the most funds. The situation on Mintos is more or less the same as last month. There are more than 144 million euro in recovery, including close to 8 million euro in pending payments. It seems like the focus of the platform next year will be to grow its investor base and offer new financial instruments such as fractional bonds and ETFs. This year, Mintos managed to lower the funds in recovery by roughly 60 million euro, also mainly due to the decrease in pending payments. Estet Guru is the second largest portfolio under management. The Estonian platform manages over 266 million, of which 128 million euro are in default. While the platform shared some information about the current state of the German market, the company is also struggling in other regions such as Finland, Lithuania and Latvia. The amount of defaulted loans increased this year by 84 million, which makes Estate Guru the worst performing platform of 2023. The third largest platform in Europe is Peerberry, which is currently managing 107 million euro. The amount has decreased due to the latest exit from Poland as the new regulation prohibits funding a lending portfolio via P2P investors. Peerberry managed to lower the amount of funds in recovery due to the war in Ukraine by 17 million euro this year. If you were to evaluate the performance of all three platforms in 2023, this is what the funds in recovery would look like. Mintos decreased the amount by 30%, Estate Guru's default rate increased by 287% and Peerberry recorded by far the largest amount of 80%. Let's however review platforms that have no funds in recovery. The top performing platforms in December of 2023 are Robocash, Escated, Inrento, Crowdbeer and Fintown. We also added a new platform to the list, a check-based crowdfunding site, Investtown. All those platforms have no funds in recovery, meaning that investors don't need to deal with pending payments or delays caused by poorly performing loans. Those platforms continue performing as expected and most increase their portfolio monthly. If you are just starting out with investments in loans, those platforms are all excellent options to consider. Outside of the performance, you must also evaluate the platform's track record, management and portfolio size. The longer the platform operates and the larger the portfolio under management, the better. If we were to compare the performance from January this year, we would also find in rental as Skated and Robocash on top of the list, which makes them the best performing platforms of 2023. Let's now have a look at the bottom of the list where you will find platforms that don't share any performance oriented data with investors. Those are the least transparent platforms in the industry, where unexpected negative events are more likely to happen. Swoper has added slightly more information into their statistics this month. Unfortunately, it's not good enough as no absolute numbers were shared. Investors don't have any insights into the outstanding portfolio allocation. The platform also introduced a workaround about how they plan to fund the loan book in Poland next year. Time will tell whether this proves to be a sustainable strategy. Via Invest is also a platform that likes to follow its own interests, which I can confirm from my experience. The platform continues extending credit lines from loans funded in July 2021, meaning it's impossible to exit since they removed the buyback option for loans during the regulation process. Recently, the platform also introduced a minimum withdrawal amount of 50 euro, meaning that if you have some leftover funds that are lower than 50 euro, you cannot easily withdraw your money. Moving on to another problematic platform. Boster is facing new issues with its lending partner Rightshows Finance, which is why the platform lowered the rating for the lender from A- to D, which stands for default. The statistical data provided by Bonster is not sufficient to determine any performance-oriented insights. Lender Market updated its statistics last month, which show a decline in asset under management. The platform announced a temporary halt on new loan listings due to regulatory changes. Lender Market was also brought to announce the third CEO this year with a generic press release using buzzwords such as thrilled, excited, innovation, growth, and elevating the user experience. It's clear that Lender Market and Credit Store are full following their own agenda and shows zero interest in repaying investors' funds, which have been stuck in pending payments for several months. 
Lender market is, however, by far not the only troublesome platform. Reinvest24 has been dealing with legal actions against its shareholder and borrower Kirsan in Moldova for most of the year. As the projects in Moldova stopped performing, the borrower assumed the platform would continue funding the following stages until the real estate developments were finished. This has not been the case, which led to legal actions between Reinvest24 representing investors and Kirsan representing its own interest. Recently, Reinvest24 shared statements from the latest court decision in Moldova, which favors the borrower. Kirsan is also aiming to remove the mortgages to be able to liquidate the assets on their own. This would be very disadvantageous for investors. The borrower proposed a questionable payment schedule where the company would not return any significant amount until 2025, or 2026. It's very plausible that by then the companies would be bankrupt with no assets whatsoever. Reinvest24 has submitted an appeal against this plan and um, course decision, which you will find translated into English in our newsfeed. If you want a more summarized overview, you can read the latest blog post on Reinvest24. Currently, it seems like Kirsal and ultimately the beneficial owners of the Kirsal group of companies, Sergio Coman and Alexander Coman, are not interested in repaying the debt back to investors. Only time will tell how this situation will unfold. Investors should expect a lengthy process. Suppose this dispute is not resolved according to the agreed terms and conditions. In that case, it will certainly have a negative financial impact on investors, but also reputational damage to both parties, Reinvest24 and Kirsan, which is aiming to raise funds with their own platform, Kirsan Invest, which looks like a scam at first sight. While investors cannot do anything with their investments in Moldova, there are still a lot of risk-related decisions that one can make when planning a p 2 billing strategy for 2024. Outside of hostile borrowers, investors also need to think about regulatory changes, which leads me to Twino. This company has replaced its entire management team several times in the past few years. Even the previous CEO I interviewed expressed the wish to not be associated with Twino anymore. You can get a good idea about the portfolio distribution when looking at the latest statistical data published on Twino's blog post. 30% of the portfolio is in recovery as bank transfers from Russia are limited. So that's money stuck in Russia and investors cannot access it. The largest portion of the Austin portfolio is issued in Poland, where the new regulation forbids the funding of a lending portfolio via P2P investors starting January 2024. Fino themselves published another blog post where they justified that this law does not affect them as they issue digital credit cards with credit limits instead of personal loans. This loophole in the law can be closed in the upcoming months as the new regulation comes into force. Logically, a credit card enabling users to use money in exchange for interest is a loan. If the regulator is interested in cutting off the funding of lending portfolios, closing this loophole won't take long. So what do you think will happen with 80 million euro Polish portfolio if the regulator amends the details of the regulation. Well, Twino will not be able to fund its loan book in Poland anymore. Investors don't know how much of Twino's Polish portfolio is self-funded. No one should, however, expect that Twino has 18 million euro in their accounts ready to transfer back to investors. The platform does not offer any group guarantee as many investors realized when the Russian portfolio got stuck and Twino didn't make any extra effort to repay the debt faster from the revenue generated in other markets. I believe that with the upcoming regulatory changes, Twino as well as any other platform that will exploit all possible workarounds is taking a huge risk with investors' money. Outside of the illiquid Russian portfolio and the increased regulatory risk in Poland, Twino is also expanding its loan book for Valmo in Vietnam, which is a joint venture with the Via Invest Group known for protecting its own interest. As you might know, two large financial groups, Robocop and Amentus Group, which runs some of the two historically best performing platforms in the industry, have exited Vietnam this year due to regulatory uncertainty. While I won't be going into details, an insider shared with me that the lending business in Vietnam can be shut down anytime, which makes it the riskiest market worldwide. Twino currently has an exposure of 4.4 million euro or 13% of its loan portfolio in Vietnam. If any of the regulatory risks in Poland and Vietnam materialize next year, it would put 79% of the outstanding portfolio at risk. And if that happens, I'm not sure Twino will continue its operations. Outside of regulatory risks, investors should also pay attention to the loan book quality from platforms offering investments in agricultural loans. Heavy Finance reports a 20% default rate, which increased compared to the previous month. 
On Lambda, we see a relatively low default rate, but the number of loans with a delay of more than 60 days is increasing. If those loans won't be recovered in the upcoming weeks, the default rate might increase to 8% soon. There is also a lot of room for improvement on the income marketplace, especially in the communication department. It took two months for the platform to release a statement concerning the non-fulfillment of the buyback guarantees for loans from Vivus in Mexico. For this reason, we will now categorize all loans with the status buyback initiated as loans in recovery, which represent the default rate of the portfolio on a particular platform. In income's case, it's 5.64% as of mid-December. Outside of the rather negative news and warnings, there are also some good news. Platforms such as Capitalia, Inrento and Profitus received the European crowdfunding service provider license so they can continue issuing new loans under this new regulatory framework. So this sums up the latest news and developments in the P2P lending industry. It seems like 2024 will be an interesting year for P2P investors. Navigating the P2P lending space will become even more difficult, but following P2P Empire is easy. So if you appreciate the update, hit the like button and subscribe to not miss out on the next one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.